A mathematics professor was giving a tour of the university to some new students. When he got to the cafeteria, he added with a flourish, and this is our binomial cafeteria. One of the students asked, is it called that because there are so many choices? To which the professor replied, no, it's because you should buy no meal here. And we will be talking about binomial distributions after we start with the geometric model. So first of all, let's assume there's a speckled M&M &M pr promotion and 30% of the M&Ms are going to be covered in speckles and mixed randomly with the normal candy. So you're going to buy a bag and take out the candies one at a time. You're looking for speckles. So what is the probability that the first speckled candy you find is the fourth one? Well, this should be pretty straightforward. We're basically looking at, okay, we're not going to get speckled, so I put C for complement there, not speckled, not speckled, and then finally a speckled one on the fourth. So that's a pretty straightforward multiplication, 0.7 to the third times 0.3, because the first three are failures and the last one is a success. And that would give us the probability. We just cube 0.7 and multiply it by 0.3. This is called a Bernoulli trial because there are only two outcomes, success or failure, and the trials are effectively independent. The next M&M doesn't depend so much on the first M&M. Well, let's go ahead and calculate what's the probability it will be the tenth one we get. Well, that could be kind of long. You can see complement, complement, complement. I got to write that out nine times times, and then the tenth one is a success. So it's going to look something like this, 0.7 to the ninth, right, times 0.3. So you could probably say, well, you know, I could just skip straight to this because it's, uh, you know, it's shorter. I know I'm going to have nine failures, and I'm going to have on my tenth try my success. Well, that leads us to our geometric probability model. So, model, so I'm going to introduce some notation. So we're going to just use P for the probability of success. And then the probability of failure will be 1 minus P. And we're going to call that one Q. And we're basically know we're going to have Q failures up until almost the last one, the next to last one. That's why it's X minus 1. And we're going to have success on that last attempt. So the geomet this is called the geometric probability model, model and the important conditions are the trials have to be independent. Each trial has only two possible outcomes, success or failure. The probability of success is the same for all trials, which is kind of like going back to the independent thing. And X represents the number of trials until the very first success is observed. Okay. Uh, now, if you want to see, we actually know that the expected value for this uh, mu, because we're actually dealing more with populations here, is 1 over p, 1 over the probability of success. Now there is a derivation in the math box for this and for standard deviation, and that's on page 388, which you can go check out. Um, but we can kind of logically reason this one out. This one's a little trickier. Um, but I can logically reason this one out. Um, for example, if I was rolling a die and the probability of rolling a 5, how many throws would I expect before I get a 5? probably six throws, you know, you get through one of each of the numbers. And the reason is, yeah, sure, I could get a five on the first throw, but maybe I don't get a five until the 12th throw. So on average, we expect six uh, throws to get that first five. Okay, so it's just one over the probability. So if I take one divided by one six, I would get six. All right, let's go ahead and do an example. And of course, you know, Mrs. Overman likes her Pokemon Go. And in Pokemon Go, you have to throw a Pokeball at a Pokemon to try and capture it. So the, the little Pokemon gets caught in the ball and it might shake and then you'll see if you caught it or not. So I estimated my probability of catching a Pikachu on a single throw of just a regular Pokeball to be 20%. Is this a Bernoulli trial? We're going to assume there are only two outcomes on each throw. You either catch the Pikachu or you don't. And I'm also going to assume, by the way, that Pikachu is not going to run away. So they'll have an, another attempt to be able to catch them. My P in this case is going to be 0 0.20 because 20% 0.20. Q is just 1 minus that. So it's 0 
and the result of each throw is independent of the previous one. All right. So what is the probability I'll need three Pokeballs to catch my Pikachu? Because if I'm catching a Pikachu, I've got to throw a ball. And if I fail, I throw another ball. And if I fail, I throw another ball. And if I succeed, then I'm done. So my probability again is 0.2, Q is still 0.8, and X is now 3. X represents the number of attempts So for my first success. I recall my formula right here. And I find out that P of the probability that X equals 3, that my first success will occur on the third turn, is 0.8 to the 3 minus 1 times 0.2, or basically 0.8 squared times 0.2, or 0.128. So I would expect about a 12.8% chance of catching my Pikachu uh, with the, the third ball that I will need three balls to catch the Pikachu. So I'm actually pretty interested uh, in what the average number of Pokeballs I'll need to catch a Pikachu. And that works well for this problem because the first time I catch a Pikachu, I'm done. So the probabilities are the same. It's still 0.2 and the probability of failure is 0.8. I'm going to use the formula that the expected value or the mean is 1 over P. And so it's 1 over 0.2, so I would expect on average over the course of hunting many Pikachus to use five Pokeballs. I can also calculate the standard deviation, which is actually going to be kind of high here. It's um, 0.8 divided by 0.2 squared, so it'd be 0.8 divided by 0.04, take the square root of that, and I'm getting roughly 4.47 Pokeballs, which is kind of high since that's just one standard deviation and it's very close to the value here. So uh, one thing when there's the 10% condition rule when using Vernoli trials. So with a small bag of M&Ms, if I had like a bag of 25 or 30 and I had an idea of the population in the bag, the probabilities would change as we sampled more of the bag. So if I hadn't gotten any speckled M&Ms yet, the probabilities of me getting a speckled M&M on the next one would increase as I took M&Ms out. But with a really large bag of M&Ms, we could sample quite a few before the probabilities change significantly. So Bernoulli trials must be independent, but if it's violated, it's still okay to use it as long as the sample is le smaller than 10% of the population. So that's just a general rule we use. So let's do another example, a grocery store checkout, and we're going to assume 25% of the customers in the store use an express checkout. What is the probability that the fifth person will be the first one to use a checkout? So let's write down a probability P is 0.25. So Q is 1 minus that, or 0.75. In this case, X is 5, where the first person is going to be the fifth person. You know what I mean. And does this violate, uh, do we need the 10% condition? Well, the trials aren't independent because the population of shoppers is finite. It's not infinite. But the shoppers represent less than 10% of total possible shoppers for the day. So it'll be fine. We're only looking at five customers. I hope the store has more than 50 customers in a day. Remember the formula. And we're going to go ahead and substitute these values in. And we get 0 0.0791. And believe it or not, that's not too hard to calculate or write down. And if I were taking the AP test, I would totally write this down to show that I know what's going on. But yes, your calculator is also able to calculate these probabilities. We're going to look at the same problem and how we would basically set it up. So we're, we still have the same P, and we're still looking at the fifth customer being the first person to use the express checkout. So how do we do it on the calculator? We're going to press second distribution. And then you're going to scroll down to geometric. By the way, it's easier to scroll up because it's way down on the bottom. There it is. And make sure you go to PDF, not CDF, and press Enter. And then you have to put in P, which is 0.25, comma, and then the X, which we said is five close parentheses, and press Enter. And you can see we actually got the same value we had last time. So yes, you can actually do this very quickly on your calculator. And it's really more handy for the next problem. And I'll show you how to do that one. So what is the probability that one of the first five customers will use Express Checkout? So 
will be the first to use the express checkout. So basically either the probability is still 0.25, Q is 1 minus P or 0.75. This time I'm going to look at the first customer being among the first five customers. So we'll go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I'm actually going to go ahead and go 0.25. So if the first customer uses a checkout, it's just 0.25. If it's the second one, the first one didn't use it, and the second one is the first one to use it. So the first checkout is among the first five. That's really what I'm asking here. Um, it would be 0.75 times 0.25. If the first customer is the third one, it'd be 0.75 squared times 0.25. If it's the fourth one, 0.75 cubed times 0.25. Fifth one, 0.75 to the fourth times 0.25. And basically, you would get 0.7627. Luckily, your calculator can also do that. So the important thing to remember here is you're actually working out probabilities for x equals 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 and adding them all together. All right. As I said, there's actually a much faster way to do these on the calculator when you're trying to figure out multiple probabilities. So in this case, probability is 0.25, but now I'm dealing with x is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So you're going to press second distribution like you did before. Um, but this time we're going to look for CDF. So see bars, now I'm going to scroll up because it is easier. And there's CDF because we're doing cumulative probability. Press enter, then you put in your probability and you put in X is 5, the highest one, press enter. And then basically you have your value, which is the same thing that we calculated earlier when we did it by hand. Uh, one more thing, on average, which customer would we expect to be the first to use the express checkout? So we have probability is 0.25, Q is 0.75. So it's very simple. You basically do 1 over P. So you would expect the fourth customer to be the first one to use the express checkout.